Okay. Well, everybody, thank you for your patience while our team take took a much-needed break. Uh, but we are finally back. The funny thing is, Gregor was not told that we were taking a break. He's like, all right, guys, I'm ready to go. We're like, stand down there, Tiger. We were taking a little bit of a breather. And so he's just been kind of just hopped up, ready to go this entire time. So he's going to release all this energy on you guys now. Um, he's going to be speaking with us about the Fair Data Society. Um, going to be doing a cool little demo. And yeah, take it away and have a great time with him. He's a good guy. All right. Thanks. So, uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming here. Um, as Diego said, my name is Gregor. Uh, I come from uh, Fair Data Society. And what the, what the heck is Fair Data Society? So before um, we go into that, let's start with basically one premise, that in the digital age, freedom begins with owning your personal data. Now, we had like today a really good talk from Alexi, and there was a question about the ownage and uh, like what does it mean like to own, I guess. Uh, in this sense, this definition falls into the second bracket, and hopefully it's going to be fine-tuned over the time by smart guys like Alexis. So um, it's about yeah, autonomy and being in charge of yourself also in the digital space. And why is this important? It's important because we don't speak so much about data slavery. So. Um, I would be very happy to talk about this. I spoke a little bit about this last year, and uh, but I don't want to take up all the time. So um, in a nutshell, we know we hear about surveillance capitalism on one side. We know and hear about dopamine economy where product design is done like this, that we act like monkeys, literally. And uh, if you combine this, it's like Shoshana Zuboff says, it's not only to control us, it's about automating us. So this is, this is where we are going if uh, guys like people like uh, here, uh, if we don't do something. So, and we are doing something. And what is Fair Data Society? Fair Data Society is an initiative to build decentralized data commons. Now this is quite a mouthful and it's already because the slides are not updated there's already one error here uh, fair data society is an initiative to build self-sovereign commons uh, and what is meant by this first what is commons commons we can see uh, as a living social system where people address a shared problem in a self-organized way so in this sense um, we can see like I guess we all here, we are sharing the same problem. It's the data slavery, this or the other way. Um, and uh, we are trying to address it in a self-organized way. And it's quite a dynamic thing. So it's a, it's a living system. And this is what we try to do. Uh, Fair Data Society aims to be the glue between the low level tech part and the social part. Um, because also, if we build unstoppable apps, um, we need to think about, you know, like those boring things called ethics and how to prevent like not desired scenarios and, you know, like this all doomsday scenarios kind of thing. So maybe first, why fair data society? Fair data, you can think about it. It's a term that's uh, getting starting to being used more and more. Think about it like digital fair trade. In the sense, you know, what is fair trade about? It's against exploitation of the individual. It's about respecting human rights. It's about fair distribution of value. We don't have this in the digital space. We need something like that. So fair data is a very easy concept to communicate this. You can easily say Facebook, I guess, is not fair data, you know. Um, so one big difference between fair trade and fair data is that in the Western world, we have like this feel good feeling about yourself, you know, if I support fair trade products and stuff like that, because it's about the people in the other part of the earth, you know, it's not, not really, not really touching me, but I'm just not such an ass, consumer ass, you know, by being using fair trade. But 
fair data is relevant to all of us. Fair data is relevant to everybody who's active on the internet, who's active in the digital world. And in this way, I guess it should, we should all be thinking about it. Now the other thing, the other thing what the decentralization and all this brings in is that collaboration is key. key. So what do we mean here? The old paradigm is a zero-sum game. You know, monopolies, market leaders, etc. Here we need to think about what's called in game theory a stack hunt. Stack hunt is when together we can achieve bigger things. So, uh, and as, as a community, as the ecosystem, we need to think how all these things work together. Collaboration, interoperability, openness. There are more, there, there is more, there's fair data society principles to start and align the community around the same or at least similar vision of what should be built. We are dealing, we are asking the question what, we are not so much addressing the question of why, because if you want to organize as a decentralized community, we should just see the, the goal, different people, different values in this sense. So. Fair Data Society builds on Swarm, and before I go on or explain, how many of you know about Ethereum uh, Swarm decentralized storage? If you could raise your hands. Okay, so I didn't plan this, but guys, I guess it's time to get mind blown. But not about Fair Data Society, about Swarm. So. Uh, it's, um, Swarm has been in the making for a while. It's, it has probably the most advanced and future-proof architecture how we should approach decentralized data, how data should be stored in a self-sovereign way, and how can we establish systems where there's a single source of truth. So uh, in, a nutshell, in a nutshell, there's been a lot going on around Swarm. I, uh, if you're into decentralized storage, if you're about freedom, about communication, go to swarm.ethereum.org and uh, it's a good starting point. Um, let's continue because we have actually a lot of cover uh, to cover, especially if you are trying to do a demo on these connections. So, um, Besides the soft part, the social part, we, Fair Data Society, also actively develops. Uh, this, is the first, this is the first application that was released uh, back in March. We are iterating on it quite a lot. And it's about secure and decentralized file transfer. No servers, everything open source. You, know, you can set up your own file transfer locally, download it from GitHub uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. Or you can use our, our gateways. Uh, why we did this? We did this because in the digital age, we see that uh, file transfer is on one side such a simple use case, but at the same time, it's a human right. Everybody should be able to send a file to somebody else without being censored, surveilled, or stopped in any kind of way. Or basically fearing repercussions at some later point because uh, leaving of some meta trail data. So, it's like basically sending a file is in a way kind of precursor to also communication in this sense. So it's about freedom. Now, today we are announcing here in Fairdrop new feature releases. First, I will speak about this a little bit later. We will try to do a demo. It's what we call Honest Inbox. Um, and I'll get back to this. Um, the second one, the second one is so-called file pinning, local file pinning. And what local file pinning does, for the first time now, it's possible to guarantee persistence on Swarm, which basically means that as developers, you can start working on it. Uh, you can basically grow together with Swarm uh, nearing its uh, uh, production uh, release date. And uh, at the same time, already today, because of that, it's possible that you can use Fairdrop, easily upload a folder, connect it to the Ethereum name service, and you are hosting a website that cannot be taken down. I think this is quite cool. So, because um, there is a lot of websites that this or the other way are being taken down. So, what is Honest Inbox? Um, oh, how do we go back? 
honest inbox. Um, I will now switch to, um, if I can, just a second. So uh, I switch here before. Oh, but it's uh, this is going to. Guys, I don't think we will be able to do the to do the demo. So let's see. All right, so this is honest inbox. Now what we see is I will skip I will skip the demo of sending a file. It's very close to sending to using WeTransfer or any other apps. Um but this this is something something different. So every Fairdrop user now I created before a user uh called 36C3. So gets automatically if you type in the URL with the user you see up there get there's a landing page and what what does this landing page do it enables me that if i share this address with anybody um that they can send me the files or any kind of data anonymously um i will trigger now this demo uh i tried it before here it actually took 2 minutes so i might end up the talk earlier um uh, just please bear with me So Scott if it's okay I will just use your presentation to send it to myself I'm also a little bit um uh, it's difficult cuz I'm not used of this computer oh uh okay so basically I only need to drag a file and it starts it starts sending and uh here it creates a throwaway account it it uh, enables everything deploys the smart contract uh every everything happens in the background so it's actually going going quite fast the the demo gods are being kind today um so um or not um let's go back we will return to this So next features next project is what we call fair drive. If fair drop is a uh, secure file transfer, fair drive as the name implies it's like Google Drive, Dropbox, etc. It's uh, the evolution in this sense. And it functions it uh in a similar fashion, but it has also how much? 5 minutes. Okay. And it but it has also some really nice uh interesting properties to it. it changes again the game theoretic setting so it makes it first easy for apps to save and read data from it it's a self sovereign storage for the user only you know we can speak of your keys your data in this sense so uh now imagine like all the dapps producers when we speak about the great web as as it was today called or web3 you know it's like we see new user patterns user uh, user design patterns emerging where uh, the apps are being unbundled and basically all these devs want to have a place where to save the data and now if you make a thought experiment imagine all the all the apps saving data in the same spot for the user because you know if we are speaking about the user the biggest value for the user is to have the data poss possibility to manage the data from one place And now if I own this data it enables a new kind of apps so called zero data apps that run locally and use rich data sources I can use affective data I can use EEG data neuro data to drive my apps without exposing my privacy so basically in our opinion it's when we sort out the storage we enable the way for developers to start developing new generation of apps the ones that are fair data and that can use new kinds of data in a whole new ways and here we come back to why collaboration is key 
This can be done only if we come all together as an ecosystem. So to wrap up, I would really like to thank uh, the awesome CDC team here, especially also the Riot guys. It's like every year, every year uh, this cluster is growing. And I remember when I had a talk here and there were like two people, both my friends. You know, so, uh, and this is, I would also like to thank you for staying here while well, there are so many other amazing talks happening. So, thank you all. Now, <laughs> so, okay, now let's do, now let's check. So, we see here that the file was sent. In the meantime, I will now, because I created before the account, I will log in. Well, okay, these are some plugins, I guess. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, and we see the Mandelbot presentation in the received uh, inbox of Fairdrop. So basically, it works. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did you see that the password was little stars instead of little dots? Isn't that adorable? These guys are just adorable. Get off my stage. Thank you so much uh, for presenting that to us, Gregor.